Hello, and I hope you're well, and I hope you're looking after yourselves, and I hope you're washing your hands, and I hope you're doing your fair share of the household chores and looking after everyone in your family, and I hope you're getting some exercise. And uh, I hope you're enjoying the psychology that we're sending through to you. Just a little plea, can you make sure, please, uh, as I said on one of the classroom things recently, all the work is due in on a Wednesday. So can you, can you please make sure that you've got everything done by the Wednesday so that I've got some time to mark it and get it and get it back to you and feed it back to you. OK, so there's still a couple of a few things outstanding from last Wednesday and it's, it's Monday already. So can you make sure you get that to me uh, as quick as possible? That, if that applies to you, if you've handed it in, uh, well done and keep it going. All right. So uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, validity in a little bit more detail. Um, where's that thing gone? Here we go, apologies. Um, uh, so show from the beginning, beg your pardon, there we go. Okay, so we're looking at types of fluidity and the reason we're doing that is that we want to be able to assess, to judge whether a piece of research is valid or not and exactly what that means we'll see and we'll just review some of that okay so um the big picture is that you need to be able to understand research findings and to be able to make judgments about them about whether you think they're accurate whether you think we can believe them whether you think they're useful um, and that's going to be really useful for the rest of your life that's not just a psychology thing when you read about research in the paper um you need to be able to look at that research and think actually yeah i believe that or there are problems with that and i don't believe it Okay, so by the end of the uh, of the time that you do this, so you'll be um, taking Cornell notes on all this this stuff. There is three slides at the end with tasks for you to do. I'll put this on classroom as a um, a separate PowerPoint as well as this video, so that should help you a bit. Okay, so you need to know five types of validity to be able to explain what those types of validity mean, and then to be able to use those types of validity to assess research findings, um, because that's that's a particular kind of question that you could quite easily get in an exam. Um, how would you assess the validity of a particular study? So they'd give you a scenario of one sort and then you would have to assess its validity. OK, so just re so I was imagining if I was in class, I'd probably ask you that to start with. And I'd present you something like this. OK, so validity, which is true. Validity refers to whether an observed effect is a genuine one. Validity asks the question, are our research findings true? Validity asks, does our test measure what it claims to measure? Validity means our research findings can be generalised. Which one of those would you say is true? And I'm looking around my imaginary classroom. Yep, very good, very good, good. Yeah, hands up. Yep, and um, what I'm hearing from people quite accurately is that actually all of these are true. Because validity is quite a complicated thing in some ways. But all of these uh, ideas are, are accurate. And we, we're just going to play around with them a little bit more in the rest of this uh, PowerPoint, OK? And then we also know that there there's internal validity and external validity, do you remember that? So I'd say, well, OK, what's well, internal validity? And you'd be talking probably about uh, internal validity means that it's something to do with what goes on inside the research, what goes on inside an experiment, for example. So if we're talking about it uh, in an experiment, we would control all the confounding variables, which means that we'd be confident that the IV caused the change in the DV, OK? Um, and that there's a good level of mundane realism so that the participants believe that they were doing something in real life. So that's what that would mean if we were talking about a, um, an experiment. If we were talking about something like a questionnaire, we'd ask ourselves the question, do all the que questions measure what we intended to measure? So if we were measuring an IQ test, we were giving someone an IQ test to measure intelligence, whatever that might mean, um, are all the questions about that? So uh, that's how we would, we would measure that. For example, if there, was, if there were some questions asking people's uh, knowledge of French, that's not necessarily um, an intelligence, that's not an intelligence question, because some people may not have been taught French. Okay, so. That's what you mean by internal validity. Then I'd ask you next, I would say, OK, what's external validity? And you'd be saying this is to do all external. It's something to do with something outside the research. 
we bang on again. Uh, we'd be able to apply our findings outside the research settings too. For example, there are more than these, but these are the ones that we'll just focus on. Uh, can we uh, apply our findings to the population as a whole? That would be population validity. And uh, you'd probably be thinking, oh, that's that could well be something to do with the sample. If we did the sampling right, maybe we could do that. If the sampling represented the whole population, then we could do that. that then it would have population validity. Um, also, can, we, can it be applied to other historical periods? Does it have historical validity? So, for example, some research done in the 1950s, 70 years ago, well, that was the decade that Mr. Bouton was born. Um, does that, does that research, could that, could the findings from that research still be applied and still be true now? And that's a big, that's a big question. Okay. okay, so that's where, that's the stuff that we've already covered. We're thinking about the truthfulness and all the rest of it of, of research. Okay, so how do we assess that? So, so we need to imagine that we're being presented with a piece of research. Someone will say, oh, look, here's some research I did on something and here's what I did. Um, and we have to try and figure out, can we assess, let's assess that and see whether we can actually believe the findings. So the first way of doing that is, this, is taking this idea of face validity. So you may have heard of the phrase, uh, face, taking something at face value. So um, it's looking, just looking on the surface of something to see, okay, that whether that's, uh, to see whether it's true or not. So with face validity, this is what we do. We look the research in the face. We don't go any further than the face. We just look at the front of it, if you like, and ask ourselves whether it's measuring what it claims to be measuring. So if we saw a, a stress questionnaire, um, and it was only asking about, asking questions about work or college, um, does that look like it's measuring stress? Because don't forget, we could get we could be experiencing stress through family relationships. We could experience stress through our friendship groups. Uh, we could be experiencing stress from from lots of other areas. So that would be a, that would be a matter of face validity. And and this type this type of measure is a fairly straightforward one. It's intuitive. It means uh, it's based on a gut feeling. Okay, so we can't really go any further than that. We can look at it, and, and we're generally pretty good at this kind of stuff. Look and say, yeah, that looks like it's measuring stress, or that looks like it's measuring anger or anxiety or whatever. Okay. Slightly deeper level is an, uh, the idea of content validity. So we're looking at the research and asking ourselves whether it's measuring the intended content. Okay. So if I'm asking a stress questionnaire, am I only asking? Am I asking questions about stress and nothing else? And am, am I, have I got the the content stress? Have I got it uh, absolutely right? Now, we might not know that, but we, we could certainly um, ask an expert like a, a, a professional psychologist at one sort or another to have a look at the questionnaire that we've written and say, OK. And he might just or it, she might just say, uh, yep, that's um, that is that has got content validity that is asking about stress or they might suggest improvements. OK, so that's the kind of thing that they'd be looking for in an exam if they said, how would you use content validity to improve? Uh, the questionnaire that's what you would do you'd refer it to someone who knows a lot about this the topic in this case stress and who'd be able to tell you what the content of a stress questionnaire would actually look like okay concurrent validity um, so in this one we actually look at the research and ask ourselves whether the scores on this quest stress questionnaire are similar to scores on another stress questionnaire that's been accepted as valid by experts so if we've got one questionnaire that we know works and is accurate, then we would expect the scores on a new questionnaire to be similar to those scores. And that would give it concurrent validity. So if someone did one questionnaire and came out as highly stressed, and then we gave them our stress questionnaire, we would expect if we did have concurrent validity for them to be highly stressed on our questionnaire too. Um, the way to do it, the way, so the way to check that obviously would be to give them both questionnaires and make that comparison. Okay, so that's, um, that's how we would do that one. Construct validity. Now this is, this is interesting. Construct is it's to do, it's gonna to be to do with definitions as well, okay? So we look at the research and ask ourselves whether it is completely measuring the phenomenon it is investigating. So again, we're thinking about stress, right? And stress is a complicated behavior. 
stress isn't just about feeling something it's not just about thinking yeah it's all of those things okay so when we feel stressed we will have a higher level of cortisol in our uh, bloodstream for example uh, we think differently when we're stressed don't necessarily think so clearly our emotional response is different so we feel different we behave differently okay so we've got all of those um, all of those different things so if someone was only measuring uh, asking us questions for example if the questionnaire was simply about um, um, if, it was, if the questionnaire was simply about something like how people behave when they're stressed what do you do when you're stressed then that really hasn't got construct validity because it's missing out a lot of the other bits okay but if we could if we looked at it and if we saw the questions covered all part of the definition or construct of stress spelling mistake i've just seen there apologies um i'll change that later um that is uh, that's how we would do it so that's construct validity construct validity and it's does the questionnaire measure all the different parts of the phenomenon we're looking at does it measure all the different bits of stress that we're interested in in our definition okay predictive validity that's quite a useful one that's a that helps us to find out whether we would expect this to be true wouldn't we that um we look at the research and ask whether the findings would predict things about participants that we would expect so if someone did a did a stress uh, test or did a stress questionnaire that we gave them um, and, and it said that they were highly stressed and they had a high stress score, then you could predict, for example, that they might have a high le higher level of blood pressure than someone who had a low score. And that's, a, that's another way, and that shows that, that our research could be useful because it can actually tell us something about the future. And if we knew that someone was highly stressed, we could do something, and that could enable us to help them with their um, blood pressure and their physiological responses. Okay. So if you were... Uh, so another couple of ways of dealing with issues of validity on a questionnaire could be to do with internal validity. Um, we could look at we need to look at the questions, and if the if the questions might not be about stress or they might not be very good questions about stress, we would need to change those. So we're changing stuff inside the research. External validity could be low. For example, the sample might be unrepresentative. So if we've only got um, uh, students, for example in the questionnaire aged between 16 and 18 external validity would be low wouldn't it because we can't really generalize those to the whole of the population okay now don't forget if you've got any questions about any of this uh, stuff get in touch with me in touch with me via classroom or email okay so um couple of examples of the kind of things that we could do here so if we were being asked to assess the validity of an experiment um, we could think about internal validity what was what's going to affect internal validity so we could look at things like how much control has the experimenter achieved over confounding variables and if it's a, a very well controlled ex uh, experiment then we can be confident that the IV has caused the, the change in the DV and therefore it's got internal validity uh, external validity can be assessed by looking at the sample, how representative it is, and then we'll be able to make a decision about whether we could generalise it to, uh, to other ones. I want you to have a think for a minute, you can pause the video if you wish, and think about how would you use space validity and content validity here um, to assess uh, an experiment of this sort. Okay, next one. Assessing the validity of an observation. A couple of ways we could do that. We could actually look at the observation schedule or checklist. And so the things that we're looking for and say, does that look like it's focused on what it claims to be investigating? Okay, so if we were watching, uh, say we were observing someone for CM, um, for, if we were observing someone to see if we could see any evidence of uh, stressed behavior. Um, Does, are all of the um, are all of the things on the checklist? Do they make sense in that, in that way? Uh, content validity. Again, look at the uh, look at the observation schedule checklist and ask an expert to see if it's investigating the right things. Yeah. So that's a 
content for the business, it's always good to get someone else's, get an expert's opinion on whether that's accurate or not. Um, assessing the validity of self-report techniques. So we've got things like questionnaires and interviews when we talk about self-report. Using face validity, we could look at the research and ask whether it seems to be measuring what it claims to be measuring. Okay, so the, again, does it look like the questions are asking about stress or whatever? Okay. Content validity, does a stress questionnaire ask the questions about stress? Again, you can ask an expert. I want you to think about how would you use construct validity to assess a stress questionnaire? How would you use concurrent validity to, ass to access assess a stress questionnaire? So can I have another little pause and answer those two? And I'll push on to the last little section. Okay, so these three um, scenarios here are exactly the kind of things, I'll just push, go back a little bit and say talk about them again. These uh, three scenarios here are the sort of things that you might get in, um, uh, get in a, a component two exam. They'll describe the scenario and then they can say, how would you assess the validity of this experiment? How would you assess the validity of this other kind of research? Okay, so um, again, so I would like you to get that done for um, the, sixth, the 13th, so Wednesday the 13th of um, May, if you could make sure you've got all of those done. Um, good, oh it's actually on there, isn't that good? Okay, well thanks for dropping in, it's lovely to see you and uh, I'll do, um, I've got one more piece of, of work to set which I'm going to set for you on Wednesday morning, okay, so, um, so enjoy this one and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Take care.